Welcome to uh, East Acre Community Call number eight. Um, we're glad to have you all here today. It is Thursday, September 10th, 2020. Um, today on the agenda, we have, uh, we're going to talk about the Study Master Program. We have Joseph with us, JC with us to talk about the Study Master Program. Uh, we have Lakshman here to talk about the Madasha Data Challenge, and I also see Stephen Gilbert here. Um, and we have, well, if he hasn't shown up yet, we should have um, Aditya to talk about a secret shared validators program that uh, sounds very interesting and we'd like to learn more about. Uh, our call will take about an hour. I think it's here, great. Uh, we want to be as inclusive of the community mm -hmm. as we can. Uh, let me tell you a little of the background before we get into the call. Uh, the ETH Staker community is housed both at reddit.com slash r slash ETH Staker and at our Discord, um, ETH Staker. We run a um, a Twitter at uh, ETH2SCC, ETH2Staker community call.com that you can use to keep up with us. We are generally a bunch of people who want to support uh, the onboarding of new users into the Ethereum to staking ecosystem. We recognize that this is a major shift in thinking in Ethereum, and we want uh, as many users to be on board as possible. You may see that we engage with some staking as a service providers, um, but as a community, uh, the ETH stakers do not endorse any staking as a service provider. We do encourage solo staking uh, while recognizing that there is uh, a place for staking as a service. We cannot vouch for those services because we never know if one of them is going to uh, disappear and we don't want to be responsible for that. So we're always going to leave that up to you. Uh, so we have this interesting relationship with staking as a service providers. We do not endorse them, uh, but we do welcome them. Uh, yeah, so we're working to hold these calls every two weeks. Uh, let me introduce my team really briefly and then I'll ask them to say hello. I am Superfizz. Uh, I run uh, the, well, I'm, I'm a moderator at the reddit.com slash r slash ethstaker and I work on the uh, Discord. My pet project right now is the Study Master program. Uh, Lamboshi is my wingman. Uh, oh. Patricio is here with Poet. No. Uh, we also have our dear friend Buddha, who is uh, our DevOps guy, who is on vacation this week, and we're welcoming a a new guy, uh, Michael, uh, who goes by Envetica. Uh, do you, would you um, guys like to take turns saying hello? Yeah, uh, I'm Michael. Uh, this is my wife Emma, and we are uh, together on Envetica. We're just uh, you can classify us as enthusiasts for the time being. So. I'm Boshi. Uh, hi, I'm Nolan. I'm moderator at East Staker and on Discord, enthusiastic participant. Hello, everyone. I'm, I'm Patricio. Um, I'm running POAP. Um, POAP is using uh, the East Staker's community as guinea pigs for doing new features and products. So you will be hearing about our product maybe more than what you want to. <laughs> yeah, uh, so we're, we're a little obsessed with POAP, uh, so I know that I talk about it too much, but I'm obsessed with it, so it is what it is. Um, I talk about my obsessions. Uh, you can find the agenda for today's call at uh, github.com slash superfizz slash ethstaker. Uh, I run an agenda there, and they're sorted by dates. Uh, today, uh, we're going to, doing this, introductions and warm up, we're going to get into a study master discussion. Um, we're going to talk about um, the client PO apps for a minute. Uh, if, if you know that the ETH2 client validators had a, um, a, PO app, a PO app opportunity for each of the different staking clients, and we want to chat about that a minute. Then we're going to get with Lakshman about uh, the uh, Madasha data challenge. And finally, we're going to hear from Aditya about... Uh, Kafta and secret share validators. A lot of what we're hearing today is going to be brand new, which is kind of exciting for all of us. So uh, 
without further ado, are we ready to rock and roll? Let's let's say hi to our guests real quick. Um, Lakshman, can you tell us a little bit about uh, yourself and your background? Yeah, sure. Um, hey everyone, I'm I'm Lakshman. I'm uh, with the Ethereum Foundation. Um, I've been kind of involved with Ethereum cursorily for the last like two or three years. Before that, I was like a software product person at like normal web two companies for, for a long time. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I guess I've been with the EF in some capacity for the last year um, and just generally really excited to see this ecosystem and community around ETH2 uh, form. Um, it's been a lot of fun trolling the Discord um, and I'm excited to actually have something to share today. Thank you. Uh, Joseph, can you tell us about yourself? Sure. Hi. Um, yeah, Joseph. Uh, yeah, being written different things about Ethereum, um, made some talks different times, uh, wrote one of the early smart contracts called BTC Relay Bridge with Bitcoin. And right now we're just trying to stop all this um, Zoom bombing happening here. Thanks. Great. It's always, yeah. So whoever is helping with, uh, with that, I really appreciate it. I wasn't even aware of it. So thanks. Um, and we have Aditya. Hi, Aditya. How are you? Okay. So I, I'm not sure if you're muted, if you're not catching me, uh, but Aditya is here, uh, to discuss, uh, Kafta, yeah, he, uh, uh, Aditya is saying on the chat that he can't unmute himself. Yes, I'm sorry. I was uh, so Lem, uh, Lakshman is host right now. If you can give Aditya, um, I just asked him to unmute. Should be good. Okay, well, uh, we're going to take a minute because I, I do want to make sure he has an opportunity to get there. Okay, I also clicked on mute. Hey, did that work? Hi, great. There we go. Welcome. How are you? Hi, I'm good. I'm Aditya. It's my first time here on r slash Uh Been around in the Ethereum community for, I think, two and a half years now. And I used to work on Casper CBC with Vlad Zamfir before. And now I'm doing ETH2 research and development with the Ethereum Foundation. And uh, yeah, uh, excited for this call. Great, great. Glad to have you. Uh, very exciting. So we're going to begin, I guess, talking about uh, Study Master. And uh, though I'm not aware of it, I, I guess we're having some, some trolling issues going on right now. Um, I'm very interested to hear, uh, maybe through the chat box, um, questions from people who are participating in uh, Study Master, what you think of it. I'm going to give you a broad overview and then we'll get into it a little more. Um, so Study Master is uh, an idea that I had to incentivize learning more about the Ethereum 2 ecosystem. Uh, basically, we look for articles that are introductory in nature to Ethereum 2 so that people who are interested in staking can read an article, learn a little bit about it, and then take a quiz. The big picture is uh, we're going to offer 10 quizzes over 10 weeks. If you pass 10 of those quizzes with 70% accuracy, you'll earn a POAP uh, that is basically a badge that says, I am familiar with Ethereum too. And I don't know where it's going to go in the long run, but I sort of have the idea that um, looking at someone, someone's POAP uh, list of badges and seeing that they've been through this course would be a strong suggestion that they know what they're talking about when it comes to staking. Uh, the quizzes are uh, intended to be at a 10th grade reading level so that uh, basically anyone who's interested and is willing to put the time into it can uh, learn more about Ethereum too. And uh, we have Joseph here who wrote the, um, the first uh, article that um, our first quiz was based on. Uh, can you tell us your experience and, and, and how it's working out for you, Joseph? Sure, sure, yeah. I, so, um, yeah, f first, uh, yeah, I guess the first experience was a su surprise, pl pleasant surprise, um, b being uh, like selected as the 
uh, author the first first article. So, so that that quiz um, still it was pr pretty interesting because, in my opinion, Fizz does a really really good job of um, writing these quizzes, and it's like uh, you know some of them do definitely get you to think because you know sometimes it could look like there there's more one more than one answer. So then, yeah, you always have to then fall back of which which answer do do you think is 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 best? Uh, so even though I I wrote the the first one and I knew quite a bit about things already, in, so it also helped with the second um, week. Learn learned a lot in the the third week with uh, Jim's Jim's uh, article. It was a great way as well to just um, you know I. I yeah, pretty sure I probably saw saw Jim Jim's article and Twitter some some sometime, but ne never got around to, to to reading it yet. So it was a great way to also, um, yeah, actually re read it and then uh, you know re read through the whole thing and then actually yeah see see the, the quiz and do it. Thanks. I, I'm finding the same thing myself. I, many of these articles I've read, but it's the close reading that actually brings you to thinking about how things actually work together because there's so much to read about ethereum too until you really have a reason to do a close reading um, at least you know i'm an end user i i i'm not required to use that knowledge for development uh, it's easy to let it wash past but when i have a reason to focus on it um, i find that I, I i learn a lot more i'd like to uh to bring up michael michael is uh a developer he's he, his business is Anvetica, um, and he has, he has joined us to help us improve the Study Master program. Can you tell us what you have in mind, Michael? Yeah, just a, a real surface level. Um, so I'm a DevOps engineer by day, and so I'm sort of applying those skills uh, here in making it contrary to what blockchain is, sort of centralizing some of these features uh, for the study master program where we have um, both the study materials, whether they be uh, articles or, or a single article or a website, um, and then package that together with the quiz material um, in, a, in a learning management system. So uh, you can learn and uh, study the material. And then that will be um, linked, if you will, to our Discord channel so that any comments or questions that you have as you're studying, you can make um, within the study material itself and that will copy over to the Discord. So there's, you're, you're sort of always sort of in the Discord ecosystem. And then um, you should be able to have, at least on our end, a more manageable system with the quizzes in the sense that we can track per user um, exactly by your Discord username, the progress that you're making. You know, we can send little nudges if you've only gotten uh, a certain percentage done. If it's the last day, you'll kind of get notification automatically. Um, you also see sort of scoreboards. So it, just a platform overall to um, better interact and sort of consolidate um, more user-friendly features um, to sort of further incentivize um, the, the over, oh, what is it what I'm trying to articulate? <clears throat> Make it more welcoming, I think, um, for the overall uh, ETH state study master program, so. Awesome, I, I'm really happy to have your support. I I'd had the idea for study master for several weeks, uh, but I never, it took me a while to get it off the ground. And finally I kicked it out the door and said, Joseph's article is great, let's use it. Um, I didn't, I didn't expect a hundred participants the first week um, and that participation rate is staying strong. So uh, I'm excited to think at the end of 10 weeks, we're going to have a hundred people who have uh, a very strong foundational knowledge of Ethereum too. Um, this right now I'm planning to be my multi, my year or two multi year project. Um, looking forward to sharing it. If you want to contribute, please let me know. Uh, it, I, I don't have a strong roadmap for it. What I do see is in, is people's strong interest in learning, and I want to support that. Um, really, what they're interested in is the POAP, but eh, I'll tell myself it's the learning. <laughs> um, speaking of POAP, uh, 
Patricio is is our uh, our POAB guru, and I want to tell you that today's call does come with a um, an ETH staker POAP. You should receive a private message regarding that POAP. Um, Patricia, do you want to tell us about the program? Yes, thank you very much. So I think by now all of you got a message on on your Zoom inbox. Um, the Zoom in inbox is is very limited in functionality. So you need to make sure that you open the link before the uh, call finishes, because after it finishes, the chat goes poof and, and you cannot get it afterwards. Um, that link that you got, if you never use POAP, um, allows you to get a non-fungible token, which is a kind of token we use on Ethereum. And the tokens prove that prove that you were part of, of this meeting. And, and that may sound like something that doesn't have much value or, or it's something that you shouldn't care about because it, it's really not a big deal. But once you keep collecting these tokens, um, they become a collection and that collection can represent things you are invested into, like Ethereum 2.0. And it may happen, and I say it may happen, but it's already happening because we are working on this, that people holding certain POAPs get incentives or opportunities that others couldn't. So make sure you get the POAP of this call. If you have any interest on in learning what are the things we are planning or, or what are the things you will be able to do with your POAPs, um, follow us on social media, mainly on Twitter. Um, we are about to release some medium articles with, with new things that are doing with POAP. There are very exciting, there's a very exciting roadmap with packed of functionality and features. Um, the roadmap is a slightly delayed because we didn't expect to be forced to move to a layer two this early. So, so now um, most, of our, our, most of our development resources are focused on, on moving to a different chain, uh, likely the XDI chain, which is an EVM compatible. They call it the sister chain of Ethereum. So, um, there are many news coming. Um, feel free to stop by any of our channels. Um, one teaser, um, like what would be likely the most exciting thing for us is um, among the people that has the Medasha POAP, Medasha POAP is the POAP you get once you propose the blog in the Medasha testnet. Um, by holding that POAP, you may be automatically eligible for a raffle where the main prize is a highly powered uh, computer for running an East 2.0 node. So, so there are monetary incentive for paying attention to this. Um, although it's not the end game, there's many more to come. Um, but I think for the context of, of this meeting, uh, the call to action is uh, check your private message inbox, claim your POAP. You don't even need to pay for the gas of the minting. You can just withhold it until we have the layer two solution ready. You will get a message about that. And, and stay tuned for what's to come. Thank you. All right, so do we want to move on to the data challenge? Yeah, Last. that's great. Uh, and so I, I wanted my, uh, <laughs> I had a, a hang up, a, a glitch, I'm sorry, a network glitch for a minute. Um, but I, I'm really enjoying all of the engagement in the, uh, the chat. I, it, it took yeah, me a while sorry to for that. There, that's so that just, looks like a lot of fun. You know, when you. No, I, that's exciting stuff. This is the um, internet, you know, so it's okay. <laughs> right. Well, so it's. Yeah, so um, Lakshman is here. I don't know, uh, Lamboshi, are you? Yeah, so I you didn't get my, my Discord message. Um, so Lakshman is here to talk about um, the uh, Madasha Data, Data Challenge. Uh, Lakshman, do you want to give, give us a broad overview and uh, let us know what's going on? Oh, uh, he's muted. It looks like he's been bumped. Uh, okay, sorry. Yeah, we're, um, and I am him? the. Hey, uh, no, I my my connection is a little spotty, so I I okay, quickly great, great. rejoined. Um, Glad to have you. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for uh, th well, first of all, thanks a lot for the time, guys. Um, it's uh, it's it's really great being able to kind of like reach the staking community pretty directly. Um, so I can talk a little bit about the broad goals of the challenge and so maybe some of the specific details. But then I also wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about 
some of the paths that I think you could pursue. Um, there's a lot of information on the flyer and there's also like a wish list doc. I'll share all of that on Discord. So I don't want to go through everything, but um, hopefully it'll be enough to kind of like spark some interest or questions. Um, I don't know if this is feasible, but if maybe we can take, I can take questions in chat. I'm, I'm worried about uh, maybe maybe the, the troll-ishness no. is a so, little too much of it. No, it, it's fine because uh, the video record only has our, our video. Uh, it doesn't okay. have the chat. So if the trolls are going to troll, then that's what they'll do. If we can still pick up good content there, then it's, it's right. We can it. filter through it. Filter. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if you have questions about in chat, feel free to ask as I'm, as I'm talking. Um, can I uh, share my screen? I believe you're a co-host. If you're okay, not, let cool. me know. Cool. Cool. Do you guys see, uh, see yes, my browser? Um, so here's yes. the, here's the, the flyer, which I'll share again. Um, just, just really briefly, uh, our hope is that basically we want more people looking at Midasha data. Um, and there's kind of a, diff a few different pieces to that. One is kind of interesting visualizations. One is, uh, new analyses and one is kind of new ways to get data from, from the test net. It, I realize it's not, uh, it's not trivial necessarily to get like network data, but if you have ideas around building tools that make it easy for other people to get stuff, um, that's really valuable as well. Um, uh, like blog posts or analyses or open source tools that are, you know, kind of meet the uh, criterion, kind of like the, the our quality bar, um, which, which we talked a little bit about in this flyer, um, are eligible for up to like 15K USD. Um, and so, yeah, there's some there's some financial incentive as well, but I think uh, it's it's also just a great way to bootstrap one really important part of the ecosystem um, that is still kind of nascent. So it's a really good way to be a you know be a contributing member of the community. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about I, I I've gotten some inbound questions because uh, uh, on Twitter and on Discord about kind of like ways to start, and so I wanted to just kind of share kind of like what's in my head at least around. Um, what you can do. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there's kind of three pretty broad areas that are interesting. Um, one is kind of like basically supplements to the visualizations that we get for block explorers. Like there's many more things we can be looking at in real time. Uh, one is kind of doing some kind of uh, analysis of existing data. So like if you go and look at like the kind of the the wealth, the, the wealth distribution of ETH2 over some period of time and like produce like the Gini coefficient or something like that. Those kinds of, that kind of information is very useful. Um, and then the last, of course, as I mentioned, just kind of like new tooling. Um, so this is, this is the part I think that a lot of people have questions about is like, how do you get data? <laughs> like, how do I get started? Um, and there's sort of like, uh, I would say this is kind of like an increasing difficulty. Like if you, if you don't want to get too technical, I'd, I'd recommend starting maybe just with like block explorers, like the block explorers have APIs or you can kind of just scrape various pages. And some of the things you might get there are, you know, like a uh, wealth distribution, kind of like how deposits come in over time. Um, I think this one's really interesting. Like uh, what uh, what's the conversion rate funnel look like from proposal to inclusion, um, which you can get. Uh, a little bit more difficult if you're comfortable running a node, you can look at like the, you can hit the HTTP APIs of given nodes. And I think this is really interesting for looking at like comparing. So, so those APIs are mostly just like status data or like syncing data, um, but you can do kind of comparisons between nodes, for example, pretty easily with that. And so that's, that's also useful information um, for us to look at. And then if you want to get really fancy, there are some tools uh, which are used I think pretty extensively within like the research community um, for kind of like monitoring network data. Uh, so like gossip data, like directly um, in, in, uh, on an, a given ETH2 node or on multiple. Okay. Things like, uh, like monitoring for potential DOS attacks and like gathering some data on that or something like that. Um, and then finally, I want to just kind of like mention some of the, some of that, some of the things that you could do on the tooling side, largely around helping number three happen are, you know, like 
scripts and setups and basically data ingestion stuff. I have lots of ideas around there. So if that's interesting to you, definitely, uh, definitely DM me. Um, cool. I, I'll share this, this short document in discord. Um, but that's all I really had. Um, let's see, are there any quest questions or things? Let's see. Um, one of the, one of the things that I, I caught, um, I have two friends who are basically uh, data visualizers, but they don't have a background in Ethereum at all. So they have like a, you know, maybe they hold a few coins, but they have a passing interest. Um, how would you suggest that they, that they get into the, into this challenge uh, with, with a very heavy focus on visualization and almost no background in Ethereum APIs? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I, I think probably the easiest way right now is to pull, like, I think, I think it'd be, uh, actually, this is something that I'm, I'm going to spin on a little bit. I've realized it's like a pretty big request. Um, like, basically, are there canonical data sets that we can create for people to, to kind of play with, even if they don't want to get the data that, that are relatively simple to create. But in the absence of that, I think the simplest thing is to somehow consume data from Block Explorer. Ideally, they can work with like a like a web API or something like that, and just like pull data from that API. Um, that's probably the the easiest way to get data right now. Um, but okay. I, uh, I I also I see this as as a great onboarding opportunity for uh, people who are yeah curious about the challenge, but it actually. Uh, gives them a reason to investigate the APIs more. So uh, yeah, just exactly. Hearing from those people really excited me. Um, I think I think if you're uh, in that category, would also love to hear what data you want to look at um, because this is definitely something we can either work towards internally, like kind of making some data available, or you know maybe someone else in the community can make some data available, and then someone else can work on it, and um, both people can kind of partake in uh, like a bounty around that. Um, so if people have ideas, definitely, definitely share publicly. And uh, it feels like, it feels like there's like two dots we can connect here if we you know where these two dots are, but I'm pretty confident we'll figure it out. I had suggested earlier um, the idea of creating, you know, either one or multiple like packages of information. So things like, you know, all the different validators, all the different attestations they made and then trying to wrap that up into like CSV files or something and actually just uploading it as a torrent so we could all just seed it and distribute that around. Because I think it's going to be, I don't know, all, all attestations would probably be like into 100 gigabytes, right? Yeah. <laughs> it would but, be but... interesting to... Go ahead, Lachman. Oh, no, no, I had nothing else to add. Uh, it would be interesting to, now that we have a big snapshot of the meltdown, the Madasha meltdown from a few weeks ago, it would be interesting to uh, play that back in real time and see uh, just a, a better visual understanding of, of how the network responded. And uh, that might give a, a lot of greater under a great, a greater idea of how things uh, worked together. Um, even though I, I know much of the data, much of the opportunity lies in imaging present data. I think there's also a lot to be learned from uh, that that meltdown that that maybe has. Oh, I think been. that I think that would actually be huge. That's a that's a that's definitely something that would be really cool to look into. I think we 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 all have like a like a cursory understanding of all the things that went wrong, but there's probably many other things to study there. Um, yeah, it, historical it would be data. Great to see a, a little thirty second animation of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Right, just so make it. I think things that make more intuitive things that are happening on the network um, are, are really, really valuable. Um, so, so that I can see that being really useful. I think historical data may get more challenging, the more, uh, the more, especially the more granular you get, you're trying to look at like what, what the attestation history was like, or the attestation propagation was like at that time in the network, but definitely historical stuff is super interesting, especially incidents. Great. Um, are we set with 
Madasha Daily, Daily Challenge, are there questions or anything else that anyone wants to bring up? Are we ready to move on? Oh, someone asked a question. Uh, can we connect the data? So Shredder asked, uh, can we connect the data to outside of the test net? Um, can, can you elaborate what you mean by outside of the test net? Like connect it to data outside of the test net? I'm going to give Shredder unmute if you're ready. OK. Sure. Hello. Hey. Hey, yeah. Um, so the question was kind of um, like I was thinking the test net correlation with something like uh, DeFi and uh, Ethereum price, kind of like seeing if there was any correlation between that. So, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. I just Can hadn't, I hadn't thought of that. Um, I know, oh, Ben's here too. Um, I would be interested to see, you know, when we first launched Madasha, uh, Teku was suboptimal, but then as they've been releasing updates, it's, they've just been getting better and better for attestation of inclusion. I think it'd be really cool to see like average attestation inclusion and then annotated with the updates and new releases from Teku team. I think that'd be fun to see and just see how, you know, fast and consistently they've improved. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think, I think, uh, Seeing things like progress is cool. I think I think uh, st like correlating with ETH price or data outside of the testnet could be interesting, but I think it's a little less. Um, yeah, maybe we can we can talk offline if you have ideas. It's not something I would like really want to push on as one of the main areas because I think for the most part we're trying to just understand what's going on with the testnet. Um, but let's uh, let's catch up about that offline, Shredder. Uh, it looks like Ben also had a question. Ben, I'm going to give you unmute. Oh, hi. Yeah, thanks. Great. Um, yeah, I'm just casual, casual interest, really, the future staker. I, I work with data, I do a lot of statistical analysis myself on different kinds of data on day job. But um, yeah, I'm just uh, interested to see this um, call about uh, data analytics. So, but, but I have very little grasp of what, I have no sense of what ETH2 data, data is structures of you know the um, kind of data looks like so yeah that, that i mentioned a minute ago about having some kind of package um that would be super helpful because then you just start firing the analysis rather than having to deal with sort of you know scraping the data and so on anyway nice to be here thanks but what sort of uh like functionality would you want on that package just out of curiosity Oh, I just mean um, just the data, right? Um, just something to, to work with. I work with uh, statistical analysis packages like R. Um, so, you know, it can suck in the data, but something that would avoid having to get into, you know, writing scripts to interrogate APIs and things, which is something that I have very little familiar with, familiarity with. Uh, does that make sense? Yeah, so like extraction and munging, basically, like extraction yeah, so, into like data types that you can kind of like understand. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, like if someone else does <laughs> does this deals with that sort of the east side of things and just sort of presents the data, uh, just say, it just makes it a lot more accessible for someone like me to not have to spend so time. Something, something like Boshi mentioned that I thought was maybe a neat idea, if if we could get a large dump, uh, whether they are uh, individual uh, multi-gig packets, but even if it's a hundred gig dump, we could all uh, create a torrent swarm and share, you know, a, a large torrent of data um, that that might accommodate a lot of these solutions. Something that that would be analyzable in R or importable into a database that that reaches people who are not quite ready to query APIs, but have a lot of experience managing big data sets. Yeah, actually collecting the data, I think is a, a big roadblock for a lot of people, myself included. I mean, I can, you know, wrangle Excel a little bit, but as far as 
scraping data from APIs and all that. I, I, I have no idea. Yeah, this is really good feedback. Um, I think this is kind of like what I've been hearing from a lot of people in the last couple of days as well. So, um, yeah, I think, I, yeah, I, I'll, I'll uh, get back to you on that. I want to spin on it a little bit. I think that there's probably some stuff we can do to make that easier. Awesome. Um, any outstanding questions regarding uh, the Madasha Data Challenge? Oh, is there any money involved? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. There's uh, yeah, like. Very <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so uh, you can, uh, if basically, if like your, your, what you present is good enough, you, you can win up to 15K. Is there a submissions deadline? Oh, uh, October 20th, I believe. So six weeks starting. Oh, that's great. This past Monday. Is that, is that yeah. 15K uh, the total prize available or is it, are they individually judged and each entrant is eligible for 15K? Individually judged. Uh, I think there's like an amount we sort of budgeted, but at the same time, like if there are, a hundred things that are really worth 15k. I think you know, well, maybe not a hundred, but if there are you know some number of things that are worth uh, 15k, yeah. uh, then then that's something we would consider on a case by case basis. And so, if an entrant was like, if their goal was to speak to your ultimate goal, what is your ultimate goal? Like, if if you're saying, uh, what are you trying to accomplish uh, by setting up this this challenge? Yeah, that's a, that's a really great question. It's it's really to make, uh, I think, make the make data analysis more accessible and also get more people looking at data. So, um, I, part of it is part of it is this thing that I think we've all uh, we have all realized, which is it's like pretty challenging to get data if you're non-technical. So, part of it's that start building some ecosystem around that, and then part of it is literally just uh we want smart people in data kind of like thinking about this and sharing their ideas with other people great um all right um that's exciting i i i'm looking forward to the the outcome of this um especially knowing that that each entry will be judged individually um, because when you have this uh one 15k prize you know the the big dog is going to take that and everyone else is like oh well i why even bother? Right. Uh, so that's fantastic. Yeah, thanks a lot um, for the time. Yeah, I'm so glad to have you. Uh, and hopefully uh, we'll do a follow-up in a couple of weeks. If this is a six-week program, uh, we'll have a lot of time to, to see how things are progressing. Um, so Aditya, yeah, are you definitely. with us? Well, before we transition, um, I guess a question here was, or a comment is, um, the data about validator privacy as well. Our uh, vis visualizations around that would would be um, some something that you'd be also interested in. Yeah, definitely. I didn't really mention that, but yeah, if like things like figuring out, like if it's easy to figure out to identify a valid, like associate a validator ID with like an IP or something like that, uh, if you can figure out ways to do that uh, and you can kind of like demonstrate that it's easy to do that, that that's definitely something that. <laughs> it's worth looking at. Yeah, and also if you if we find out that um, you know guesses or heuristics on what what infrastructure that they're using, things like that, and I think yeah. this ties in with what the yeah, is yeah. going to talk next. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, thanks again, Lakshman. Uh, thanks, Joseph, for helping out there. Um, I did you reach out to me uh, to ask if there was a spot for secret shared validators, and this is. Uh, a really hot topic right now. So um, <laughs> I was going to attempt to explain it, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to let Aditya tell you what it is, tell you what it is. Okay, thanks. Uh, let me just begin with explaining briefly the why and the what of secret shared validators. So uh, there are obvious, there are some obvious risks involved with becoming a validator. Uh, so the biggest two risks are one, your validator goes offline. 
uh, maybe your machine goes down, you have network issues, you have power outages. Uh, if you're running thousands of validators on the same machine, maybe like sabotage, whatever happens, you don't want that to happen because you're losing out on rewards and you might even get a penalty for being in inactive. And the second part that you're worried about when you're a staker is your key being stolen. And if your key is stolen, then someone else has, um, you know, someone else can uh, make faulty attestations on your behalf and you can potentially get slashed. So these are kind of the two things that you definitely want to avoid. And with the current setup of how validators work, uh, your validator is just like one machine sitting somewhere. And it's not redundant and it's not secure in terms of uh, keeping your key safe. So um, in order to address the two problems, uh, there are some pretty well-known solutions for distributed systems. The first solution is redundancy. So redundancy allows you to tolerate some amount of outages, faults, machines going down, crashes, all those things. Um, and basically what this means is instead of running just one validator client, you run multiple instances of it and all of them are doing the same job. Uh, so even if some of them go down, you're still fine because the others can survive. Um, and you know, for example, what you can do is uh, deploy some validators on like Google Cloud, some on like staking service A, some on staking service B, run one on your own and stuff like that. So that allows you to get redundancy and tolerate uh, outages of your validators. The second part, which is the most interesting part is uh, secret sharing. So what this means is that you take your private key uh, of, for validating, which is like one secret, and you break it up into small pieces. And uh, you assign each piece to one of the validator instances uh, from your redundant setup. So let's say you had like five redundant validators. Uh, you would break up your validating key into five pieces and assign each piece to one of those validator clients. Now, how secret, uh, secret shared keys work is uh, the private key is broken up into small pieces, and um, these become like mini pieces of private keys. Now, when you uh, all those validators sign something uh, with those pieces, and once you have enough of these pieces, you can reconstruct a signature for the same data. So you need to have uh, signatures from at least three or three out of five uh, pieces of the of the key to combine and make it into a complete signature. So, yep, that's that's the basic idea behind secret shared validators. Uh, allows you to tolerate faults, uh, prevents outages, always keeps your validators online. Um, yep, and the basic problem uh, in implementing these is you can't just go ahead and uh, you know deploy validators, do share your key uh, in in secret pieces and so on, because what might happen is let's say you have five validated uh, five validator instances. And three of them uh, are following a different fork, and two of them are following a different fork. Now, the problem you're going to have is you can't reconstruct an entire key because, well, you don't have four out of five pieces to piece them together and create a new uh, create a signature. So you want all your validator instances to be following the same fork. Now, this sounds awfully centralized, doesn't it? Because you want them to do to follow exactly the same data, see the exact same messages, and so on. Um, Yep, so the way you solve it is, uh, I'm sure a lot of people might have guessed by now, is this is a consensus problem. So you run a consensus, uh, in a consensus algorithm between your validator instances. So before your validator goes ahead and signs something, it confirms with the other validator instances that all of us are going to sign the same thing, right? And once that is confirmed, all of them uh, go ahead and sign the same attestation or the same block proposal. Um, I'm going to share my screen real quick. Okay. Yep. Uh, can you guys see this? Yes. Okay. So this is the program that I implemented uh, this last week. Uh, and what this is going to do is it's going to fetch data from the li from a Lighthouse client that I'm running. Um, and kind of, I'm running seven nodes, uh, seven uh, secret shared validators right now, and it's going to form consensus between them about what is uh, the hash of the block at uh, slot 100. So let's see what happens when I run this. Uh, awful lot of things in the log, so you can ignore most of them. I'll point out the interesting parts. So this, if you can shift your attention here, 
Um, yep. So these are uh, logs for node six uh, out of seven nodes. And the first message here says, oh, node six received a message. This is These are not ETH2 messages. These are messages of uh, the Kofta consensus protocol. Um, yep, so it received a message and blah, 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 some metadata. And the interesting part here is uh, the hash of the block at slot 100 is uh, this value right here. So uh, this message was special because after node six received this message, uh, according to the consensus algorithm, uh, it, it processed the message and uh, it had certainty that, oh, uh, after seeing this message, I am definitely sure that all nodes uh, that are running uh, this protocol are going to decide on the same value, which means all of them agree that uh, the, the block at slot 100 has this hash. Uh, and it sets its state to decide it, which means, uh, yep, uh, it's, it's done with the consensus protocol, and it's ready to sign uh, the particular block. So that's what um, this consensus algorithm does. Um, if you want to play around with it, I'll drop a link in the Zoom chat. Yep, and this is basically a very, very uh, fundamental setup for secret shared validators. Uh, and I hope uh, this helps uh, normal stakers at home build a more resilient setup. Um, yeah, please go ahead. Very quiet. So do you plan to keep maintaining this protocol so it's uh, it gets robust enough for, for us to really rely on this for our home validators because it is nice it is a nice experiment but i would like to see more barrel testing and, and more like responsive support than just dropping it on a github oh yeah definitely so this is this is only a proof of concept this is not meant to be used in in, in an actual validator setup uh, of course, we, we like we would need more resources, more like minds thinking about this to uh, bring it to production. Uh, maybe I'm, I'm thinking about maybe reaching out to some client teams and seeing if they have uh, uh, some people to allocate to this. Uh, it's not a especially hard thing to do, so I I don't think um, it won't happen. It's just that it'll need a, a push from the community to make it happen. So so what are the next steps you are uh, you are dropping is for us to test it, and what would you like to see? Uh, so right now, it's uh, like secret sharing, etc., is hard to set up in the validator client themselves. Uh, I'm not aware of clients which currently support it. Um, I'm dropping it here so that anyone interested can join me in an effort to build secret shared validators. OK, I'm getting it. Um, this is a good place to do so because um, I feel like many of us here in the stakers community would like to see a product based on this concept so we can push the agenda forward with client teams and, and with the community at large. So so we kind of express that this is worth allocating resources to. Uh, I'm curious if, if it introduces any latency. Is, is, uh, so especially if, if it's widely geographically spaced or on slower networks, uh, are, does it increase the likelihood of missing an attestation? No. Uh, I mean, yes. O obviously, it, it introduces some overhead. But uh, the pr this protocol is actually quite fast um, in the sense what happens is there is a leader validator which says, hey, guys, our slot is coming up. Uh, what do you want to sign? And you know they run through with the protocol. And for whatever reason, if the leader fails, there is a leader failover that happens like immediately. And you elect a new leader, and like, yeah, you you're right back at it. So in that sense, this is probably one of the best uh, overheads that you can get for any secret shared setup. Um, yep. Can you? Uh, I, had a, I had a quick question. Oh, go ahead. Um, can you compare this to Attestant's Dirk software? Because they sound very similar. That... I'm not sure what Dirk is. Uh, the last time I, I glanced at it yesterday, I think it's a key management, distributed key management thing. I'm not sure if it's uh, secret shared validators, though. OK. All right. It would be I interesting sure. to I know Dirk is something about this. breaking wallets up, but I'd... we'll have to look into it more. 
Yep, thanks for the heads up. I'll check it out. Uh, who did I interrupt? Oh, that was, that was me. Um, oh, okay, sorry. That's not good. Uh, I was just I was just curious, like what in the ideal productization of this, like uh, what does it actually look like? Would you would you expect people to be kind of be running distributed nodes that sh that share a single secret for a single validator, um, and just kind of like because they're listening to different parts of the network, there's like I don't know, like like can you talk a little bit about what what it would look like in production? Right. So there's there's so many different layouts for um, implementing a let's let's call it a resilient validator. It doesn't have to be secret shared. If you only want redundancy, but you don't want uh, you know to split your key, you can do that. You can you can kind of run lots of beacon nodes and only one validator client, and you can run this consensus algorithm between the beacon nodes, um, just so that uh, you know you're you're. You can tolerate beacon node faults, uh, beacon node going down, beacon node being disconnected from the network, uh, beacon node existing in a partition, and so on. Got it. Just out of nice. curiosity, um, uh, what, uh, how I know it's a proof of concept. How how ready is it to to implement for? Uh, a mere mortal. Right. Um, so I guess, um, so this repository that I uh, uploaded, it has actually nothing to do with Ethereum. It's just a plain old consensus protocol. Uh, so for people who are um, kind of um, aware of distributed systems and kind of are uh, OK with concurrency and, and programming in concurrency, um, this should be fairly easy. It shouldn't take more than like, Two weeks or something, uh, but taking this to production for secret shared validators is a challenge because we need to come up with a solid specification so that validator clients support it, uh, beacon nodes uh, work how we expect it to. Um, making the spec is definitely uh, the biggest challenge. There are no research problems. It's all implementation now. Great. Um, I'm actually looking forward to checking this out this week. So. Uh, we'll see where that goes. Uh, Callum had a question. Um, he wonders if the cost for multiple nodes of redundancy would cost more than the amount of loss on a single node with expected downtime with a single validator. Um, and I think that's that's more of a general, yep, that's question. A general question. Yep. So this definitely depends on what your threat model is. So for example, let's say you are you are hosting your own staking as a service uh, business, and you are like allowing people to come in and uh, host their validators on your setup. And you have like uh, you know hundreds of or thousands of validators running, then you definitely want to be resilient. You want to be you want to have redundancy, and you want to have security against uh, keys being stolen. So for in in that case, yes, um, uh, it, it is cost efficient to do a resilient validator setup. But if it's just you uh, with one validator and you don't you know you have a really high grade internet connection and you live in a place where like power outages aren't common, then it may not be cost efficient. Yeah, and I would say also, I would uh, say also uh, that's exactly that's my exactly thought. But it's also the it's the also number the, of validators in general that you're running because, you're running because the overhead for the one, overhead for one, the the uh, uh, risk of running risk of additional running software additional on top of that one validator, validator is validator probably is greater probably than greater the than reward than from. Reward from what you're saving by those saving by, by those, keeping uh, that validator uh, going. Uh, right, and 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 with as with all consensus protocols, uh, it really depends on what your threat model is, uh, on what your expected downtime or expected crashes or uh, security risks are, uh, and so like coming up with a highly configurable specification for this protocol is definitely the goal. Great. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for your time, Aditya. Um, and so that's great. I'm I'm so happy. We've we've I've learned about two new products today. Well, so I knew about the Madasha Data Challenge, but I I learned a a whole lot more about how it works. Um, and we all learned more about Kafta today. So that's an exciting product to try out. Um, we talked Thanks a little bit me. about. Yes. Thank you so much. We talked about. Uh, 
the ETH2 um, study master uh, and our future plans for that. Looking forward to people earning uh, a POAP for investing in uh, their education. Um, we welcomed our our new team member, uh, Michael, who is uh, working with Envetica to support um, support us. Hopefully, everyone got a POAP. Uh, if you if you lost your POAP link today, um, let me give you Patricio's uh, private number, and you can just call him. Uh, he's always available by phone, and he loves to to catch those calls. Um, that was a joke. Um, is there anything anyone else would like to put out today? I guess um, I'll just clarify since uh, Ben gave us a good answer. Dirk distributes the validator key, um, whereas this would have, but it, it only connects to one validator, so you don't get the redundancy there. But this Kafta gives you multiple validators for more redundancy. So that's the difference between those two different pieces of software. One um, thing to mention about secret sharing validators, and it's more for um, relevant if a lot of um, users are using, um, you know, staking services. Is that uh, yeah? A dream is to be able to be able to use more than one staking service, so that a single staking service can't um, just sign sign your validators um, just by themselves. Maybe someone else can re rephrase that. Thanks. I thought that was really interesting. Yeah, I'd love to hear that expanded on. Aditya, can you expand on that? Yep. So, um, so m let's say you like want to run five valid. You want to run a validator, and you don't have a machine um, to run it at home, and you want to go to a staking service, which is I don't know custodial maybe, and uh, run your validator there. The obvious risk there is if the staking service doesn't implement their setup properly or steals your key, then you're kind of screwed. Um, so the ideal setup here is kind of you utilize multiple staking providers, like provider A, B, C, and so on, um, to have redundancy. And also, you don't want them to, like any one of them, to be able to run off with your key. So you secret share your key, and then you make a redundant setup, which is exactly what secret shared validators are all about. So if all of them support the same specification for a secret shared protocol, then you're all good. You just distribute your secret shared key among like five uh, staking providers. And between themselves, they'll run this protocol for uh, agreeing on what to sign. And uh, yeah, your validator is basically uh, Voldemort. And uh, you've distributed hot crux everywhere. Nolan and I are going to set this up together now. <laughs> we've, yeah. we've got it all worked out. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, that that is a. I, I I I my mind didn't get there yet. So that's that's a great, a great way to look at it. Um, I'm six times more excited about it now than I was just a moment ago. Um. Great. Uh, any other closing thoughts? Okay. Um, I'd love to thank everyone here. This this is actually I have to say been maybe one of my favorite calls. Um because we we focused on some newer news things uh which was just really really fun uh so um i hope you'll mark your calendar we're going to try to get back here in about two weeks uh, if you're listening to this call and you've got something you'd like to share please reach out to us um, we we love new developments and new ideas we we put a little bit of distance with staking as a service providers but that that's not to exclude them just to be cautious uh, so you're still welcome to, to share your products with us. Um, well, thank you very much, everyone. Um, see you next time and stop by to our Discord. Yes, please. Uh, don't forget to check out the ETH, ETH Staker Discord and, as well as uh, reddit.com slash r slash ETH Staker. Uh, we work really hard to welcome new users and help you find out where you fit best. Um, if you want to make a, a contribution, uh, that is time, labor to our, uh, our setup, then we would be glad to find a place to plug you in. So thanks again for your time.
Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Very cool. Thanks, team. Bye, all. See you, Ben.